Hi, everybody. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Um, this webinar is part of the Unpacking Coaching webinar series presented by the National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations. Um, my name is Mary Louise Hemeter, and I'm going to kind of be the host for today's webinar. Our topic today is group sort group coaching to support pyramid model implementation, a virtual tour of materials. So on today's webinar, um, we're going to be talking about some materials from a project that we had where we did um, group coaching um, with teachers and coaches here in the Nashville area and in Florida. And today we're really lucky to have some of those coaches with us. We're very excited about this. And um, Sarah Basler, who led this work, is going to be um, moderating the webinar today. So I'm going to turn it over to our coaches to begin um, and to introduce themselves. And Leticia, um, I'll turn it over to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Leticia Bandy. I am an early childhood coach trainer with Metropolitan Action Commission Head Start in Nashville. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Brittany Howes, an early education coach trainer as well. I work alongside with Ms. Leticia for Metro Action Commission, and I'm stationed at Tom Dilly Head Start. Hey, everyone. My name is Erica Brashears. I'm a staff development and training coordinator with Mid Cumberland Community Action Agency Head Start and uh, we serve the counties surrounding Nash uh, Nashville. Hi, and I am uh, Sarah Bassler, and as ML mentioned, um, I was the study coordinator on this project, and um, I work across several um, grants in the Hemeter Lab, and I was fortunate enough to work with these wonderful coaches, and I'm so excited to be able to share these materials with you. Okay. So for today, um, we're going to spend our time going through just a brief overview of what this project looked like um, and um, the scope and sequence of uh, this work. And then we're going to discuss how you can access these materials um, if you are interested in using them. And then finally, we're going to um, spend some time talking with these coaches and get their perspective about um, using this delivery format and um, their perspective of using these per, uh, materials and how to engage participants. All right. So PBC has been proven to be effective for helping to improve or enhance practitioner practice, but we know that individual coaching can be very resource intensive. So we developed and tested um, a model that really combines what we know to be effective about individual coaching, but we tried to apply that in a group context. So this uh, was a two-year study that occurred in 2019 and ended in 2021, and the teachers were um, in Head Start programs around uh, the Nashville, Tennessee area, and in year one, the coaches were Vanderbilt coaches, myself included. And in year two, Vanderbilt coaches um, supported the coaches in Head Start programs to lead these groups with the teachers in their programs. So one of the most important factors to really consider um, when we were developing these materials and the scope and sequence was to make sure that um, we were adhering to the PBC uh, model, but reframing it to fit in a group context. So um, we were able to adhere to this model by making sure that each group had a clear focus and set of practices, um, that we had action plans that were written or revised each time that we met, that we had videos to serve as the focused observation. So we had some example videos, we had participant videos, um, and then that we always had um, participants um, gave, were given the opportunity to reflect and give feedback to their peers about 
the videos and the practices um, that they watched. Um, so if you decide to implement group coaching in your program, adherence to PVC will be really important, but um, we, we hope that the materials can help you to adhere to the PVC cycle because we've created them in such a way that um, it really guides you to really follow the practice-based coaching cycle. All right, so the group um, focus, um, there were eight group meetings total for teachers. And in these group meetings, um, teachers were learning about uh, social emotional teaching practices. Um, they were making a plan to implement these practices in their classroom. They were sharing videos um, and they were reflecting and providing feedback to their peers about the, the use of these practices um, in the videos. And these groups were organized by um, social emotional competency area. So you see here, um, we have each competency area. The first group meeting was a, um, an introduction to the skills um, and the practices. And then in the second group, it was really reviewing what uh, participants um, had tried in their classrooms. So, um, the way these materials are designed are for the first meeting is an introduction and then the second part is a, a review. So you'll have materials for um, two groups focused on friendship skills, two groups focused on emotional literacy, two groups on self-regulation and anger management, and two groups on problem solving. So each group follows the same predictable format, which really um, creates a sense of um, um, what's to be expected for participants. Um, it's timed and it allows teachers to spend most of their time um, watching videos, reflecting, providing feedback, and writing their action plans. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned in group one, um, the focus for each competency area, we watch sample videos of uh, practices related to the topic. And then in group two is when the group members share videos of themselves implementing these practices in their classroom. <clears throat> and so if you look at this agenda, you might notice that there is quite a bit of time that's devoted to the opening of the meeting. And the great thing about um, group coaching is that it can be delivered on site, like in person or virtually. Um, but when we were doing these live and even virtually, um, we knew, noticed that people needed time to get settled, um, to get organized, to get focused. So we did add in a little bit of buffer time in the beginning um, so that you know if people are late or maybe they have another meeting that they're jumping off of, um, that we, get, we build in that time um, to buffer. Um, so this is definitely an area that if you, find yourself needing more time for the actual group because the groups are 60 minutes in length. Um, you could move faster in this, in this section, but you really want to make sure that you spend a majority of your time um, with watching the videos, um, reflection and feedback and action planning um, because that will make sure that you're um, adhering to the cycle, but also that's like the meat of the, the whole process. That's where um, teachers are going to get the most out of um, this time together. Um, and it's really important to always leave time for that action planning so that teachers know what to implement from this meeting to the next. So just um, be aware that these times are flexible, <clears throat> but, um, it, but making sure that you always have time for those middle sections, um, because those are gonna be where we see that teachers are gonna get the most out of it. Okay. So we are so excited to share with you the materials that we developed. Um, <clears throat> and so now I'm gonna give uh, you a little bit of an overview of how the materials are organized and how you can access them. So you can access all these materials by going to the NCPMI website um, on the resource page. The materials for the group include an overview video, a table of contents, and two tip sheets, and then there's a link for downloading all the coach 
and teacher materials that you'll need for group. So you'll get a zip file um, to download all of those. Um, and it's about 10 minutes. And this um, intro video will help walk you through the materials that are included, um, their use, um, and some tips for how you might prepare for coaching. So we want you to start with watching that intro video to get a good idea of, of where to begin. We also created two tip sheets to give you information on the group structure and sequence, which includes information about the, links, the, the length of group, um, the focus for each group, the agenda, um, and then we provide a bit of information about the use of videos and handouts um, and uh, materials. And then the second tip sheet is um, some strategies and some considerations that we learned from running groups and um, using these materials and some things to consider. So um, these tip sheets could be helpful um, for a coach to use. Um, you definitely want a coach to review these, just kind of um, see how these are, um, how, how groups are structured. But you could also share these um, materials with uh, program administration so that if um, they might need to be aware of what, what this is going to look like in their program and what they can expect. Um, I would even recommend sharing the group structure and sequence with the teachers that are going to be participating in groups um, so that they know what to expect. It gives a real nice overview of what um, will happen in group coaching. Um, here you see the table of contents. Um, and this document is really um, just a running list and at a glance of all the things that are included for each group. Um, so this would be a great tool. Um, I would recommend um, printing all these materials and creating yourself like um, a coach manual, so to speak, of all the group materials. Um, for our for uh, the coaches that we were working with to implement this um, model, uh, we created uh, like a coaching manual where they had all these materials ready, but it would be helpful, I think, for anyone um, wanting to use these materials to just print them all out and you can have everything ready. All right, so all the resources that we just walked through are uh, what have been labeled on the website as resources to getting started because that's uh, what they do. Those, those resources are really gonna help you kind of understand, um, lay the groundwork for um, getting started with these uh, materials. And then when you're ready, um, you can access the group bundles um, by completing a form. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you'll scroll down on the page and there'll be a form that you can fill out to complete, um, to download the coaching package. And this step is really brief. Um, it takes a minute at most to fill out. And it's just some information about um, your program and your role and where you're located. But I would recommend not doing this step unless you're ready to download because you wanna make sure that um, you don't navigate away from this page. So once you've completed your information, you'll see this button here, which is to download the materials. Um, but if you navigate away from this page or refresh your browser, this link will disappear and you'll have to go through the step uh, before this again. So just make sure that when you fill out the form that you're ready to download right then. Hey, um, Sarah, can I just interrupt and say real quickly that one of the reasons that we have you do that is because we like to collect information on who's using the materials and um, how people are using them. And so I just want you to know that we keep that information very um, private and it's just a way for us to track who's using our materials. Okay, so once you click that big blue button, um, you will download a zip file of the group coaching material bundles. Um, and once the zip file has finished downloading, 
um, you're going to click the file and it will have all the materials sorted just like you see on this page here. So it'll be sorted into folders for friendship, problem solving, self-regulation, and emotional literacy. And then you'll have two single files, um, one that is group video suggestions and posters to print. Um, the group video suggestions document um, is going to be used by coaches to select the um, example videos for the first group of each competency area. Um, and it's organized in a way so that you can, um, by each focus, and so you can um, look through uh, whichever group uh, competency area that you're on and find um, videos related to that section. Um, and then it will give you a brief synopsis of the video, like what is happening in the video, as well as the, the length of the video. Um, we found that videos that are about three to five minutes are a pretty good range. Um, uh, it depends on how many people that you'll have sharing um, videos in um, week two, how long you want those to be. But three to five minutes is a good, a good range for the length of videos that you're watching. Um, and another recommendation that I would give is to watch the videos before group. Um, you want to select two to share. You wouldn't want to come to meeting, just have clicking on one and selecting because you want to really think about the teachers that you're working with, which video would be the best fit um, for that group. And also you can kind of jot down some notes and think about um, maybe if you're having um, some members that aren't sharing um, you can have some ideas or things to point out in those videos. And so each group competency includes two folders, one for the introduction and then a folder for the second week, which is the review of the topic. Um, and in each folder, it has everything that you need for both coaches and teachers um, to engage in these groups. Right. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, there will be um, materials for coaches. So um, those materials are going to be uh, the PowerPoint presentation, which includes um, notes within and that can guide you when you're preparing to um, lead these groups. Um, there'll be a group checklist that will help you. It's um, kind of like a coaching log if for those of you who are familiar, but a fidelity log to make sure um, that you are um, adhering to the cycle and just making sure that you're um, um, uh, getting to the, the videos and to jot down notes of maybe if there's technical difficulties and things like that. Um, and then meeting attendance and participation, which can give you a lot of information about um, how people are engaging um, and give you some information on maybe if you should shift your practice. Um, and then of course, um, as I mentioned in the notes section, there will be um, uh, presenter notes. And then there's also materials that you'll need to print for the participants of group. Um, and you can do this um, whether, whether you're doing it live um, in person or um, at a distance, um, you still need to get materials to your participants. Um, if it's in person, um, printing everything out, having it ready for participants to use and engage with. And then if it's uh, um, virtual, that you make sure that you get to them via email or some other um, sharing platform. Sarah, you're kind of freezing. No, I wonder if you should turn off your video and try, and if not, I'll take over. Like I'm you're... here. <laughs> okay, try to do it without video, and I can jump in if you're having trouble. Okay, all right. Nothing like a few bumps in the road. Okay, um, and so in groups one, three, five, and seven, we recommend um, some materials that you can make and print um, for the teachers in the group. Um, these materials uh, lists are um, just, um, they're included within the resources of the 
of your um, group bundles. And th these lists aren't exhaustive, so um, feel free to add materials or resources that you know you use in your program or that you like. Um, but these, uh, the purpose of these materials are to help teachers implement these practices and strategies in their classrooms. Um, so you'll see the list for self-regulation and anger management here. And then most of the resources that are on this list can be found at the NCPMI website. And for our teacher participants, um, we would print out a set of resources. Um, if they were visuals or something that we needed to cut out or make, we would laminate. Um, if they were family resources, um, we made copies um, for the whole class so that um, teachers, all they would have to do is send, send those home. Um, and um, this was a bit time consuming, so it's important to allot time to making materials. Um, but I would say don't let the extra time uh, that's needed to make these materials scare you away. I, I spent maybe about an hour uh, making materials for teachers, but it was one of the things that we heard time and time again from teachers that were that it was so helpful and so beneficial um, to them to have these resources. Um, and it was great because they could just go the next day after we presented the content and just um, go ahead and use the materials. All right. hey, hey, Sarah, before you go on, um, there's a couple of questions about materials for infants and toddlers. And can you just clarify that the our focus, what the focus of these groups was on? Sure. So the teachers that we worked with for these groups and the materials that are provided for these group bundles are um, for children, for teachers of children that are two and a half to, to uh, five. So like that preschool age. Um, we did have one teacher that participated that was an early Head Start teacher and she was she had older twos. Um, and she was able to use these materials, but really um, the, the age range for these materials are the preschool level. So we haven't um, developed groups for the infant toddlers, um, but that is definitely something we could think about doing. Yeah, and I mean, I think we hope that this provides a structure that you can embed other content into, and we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. Um, Sarah, one more question, and everyone's saying, please, please, infants and toddlers, but um, <laughs> Sarah, one more question. Can you just talk about, I know you mentioned this, but we have a question about what's the kind of manageable size of the group? Oh, yes, that's a great question. So um, we had group sizes that ranged from five to 10 members, and we would say that given those numbers, uh, knowing, having experience from that wide range, that having a group about six to eight is the most manageable. Um, if you go much higher than eight, um, it gets a little difficult because um, in group two, um, we have teachers share videos. So if you go above eight, then you're going to have to share more than two videos in the same, which can get kind of difficult. And of course, it's harder to engage um, more participants and make sure that everyone gets a voice. <laughs> so six to eight. Okay, so I'm going to quit asking questions and let you get on to talking to our amazing coaches that are here. This is my favorite part. <laughs> Me. Um, so we've kind of thought about some um, questions uh, that really get at um, preparing and engaging and um, the parts of uh, this that I didn't get to share. And so I wanted to start out by asking, um, what were some of the ways that um, you got prepared to present these group meetings? I can answer that. Um, so the materials really are excellent. If you're a coach, um, you're walking into something that has been very well organized so that whenever you download these materials, you set up your coaching no notebook or binder, um, you really do have everything at your fingertips uh, to help you be successful in 
teaching and coordinating coaching for your teachers. So um, what I always did right before coaching, if it was my turn to lead because I co-coached, um, was that I would review that PowerPoint. Um, it really does offer a lot of notes and in a sense could be a script for you. So if you're maybe not as familiar with the materials, it gives you a chance to, um, to just kind of get familiar with it and to have a prompt to know what to say next if you get stuck. Um, so I always did review those presenter notes just so I could have confidence as I, um, as I shared with the teachers what these concepts were. Um, and then also the other thing that I did was um, I would kind of brainstorm actual examples, like real classroom examples that fit with our program so that whenever we're presenting these materials, it hopefully would resonate and click with them and think, oh, that is something I can do, or, oh, that's kind of like how we do this, but that's an even more extensive or thorough way of, of approaching it. So um, those are, that's how I got prepared. Yeah. I love how you connected to what you were seeing in the classrooms and preparing that way. Um, so for coaches that are new to these materials um, and this process, what would be one to two things that you would recommend for them to do to get prepared um, to use these materials for this format? Um, so I can answer that one too. Um, so you mentioned example videos. Um, I would take time to watch those example videos before uh, group time, just to make sure um, I could kind of filter out what comments I thought might come and, and maybe field some, prepare to field some questions that I knew might be coming if it's something different than how you handle things, or maybe the classroom might be a little distracting. Anyway, so just kind of be prepared for um, the video and what might come about as a result of that. So I always watch those just to get familiar with what I was gonna be sharing and to make sure I could offer any, any support that was needed through that. Um, but then um, also like as I was learning these, these new concepts, um, I would go spend time in classrooms and I would look for um, those real examples, like I said before, and um, it would just help me feel more comfortable teaching them if I saw them in action. Um, and so it would bring to life the concept of friendship skills. It would um, make it more concrete so that when I went to teach and coach about it, um, I could um, reference um, examples in the classroom or um, maybe um, challenging encounters I might have had where, where I noticed, oh, this is a great opportunity to practice problem solving, or man, I wish I was equipped with some problem solving skills to have dealt with that moment. It really just helps, um, helps things to come to life and helps you feel more comfortable with the content. Awesome. Hey, Sarah. Sure, just just okay. to kind of jump in on, on, on what Erica was saying, it's really, really important that you review um, the materials and really get in there and get your hands on them yourself before turning it over to the teachers to kind of explore, uh, particularly if you're not in a, in a position where you can have readily access to the classroom as much as you might want to, to just be more familiar with the materials before turning it over to uh, your coaches. That's great. That is, yeah, so you know what you're giving, giving your coaches, getting familiar with the materials. Yeah. So I'm going to, as usual, interrupt here a second. So we're getting some questions, and Sarah, maybe you can take this about um, if we if we included teachers or teaching teams, and whether you could do either. Yeah. So for our project, of course, um, because it was a study, we had uh, teachers that consented. Um, I don't believe that. In, I definitely know in year one, there were no teaching teams. In year two, I don't believe there were teaching teams, but it's certainly something that I think that you could do. Um, I think um, an important thing um, that our tip, one of our tip sheets addresses is to think about the fit for group. So definitely if you have a team of teachers that could benefit from this set of um, practices, then yes, sure, I think that would be great. Um, one thing to consider though, is that um, the time when these 
meetings would happen um, because if you have a teaching team, it might require having both of them out of the classroom at the same time, which could pose a problem, but I think there's no right or wrong way to, to do it. So I wanna think about uh, this next piece that can be difficult um, to, to make happen. Um, what are some of the ways that you got um, teachers engaged and got them talking during the meetings? Hi, Sarah, I think I can answer that one. Um, for me, one of the biggest things were to make people feel comfortable. And in an environment where you feel comfortable, you're learning. So I like to start with humor. So I would usually open up the meeting with maybe a joke or asking the teachers, um, what happened this week for you? What was a success for you? Or what is something that you just wanted to share to the whole group? Um, the next thing I would like to say is we did set group norms at the beginning of every meeting. And during these group norms, we talked about having respect for others being responsible and being just overall respective of when someone else is talking and basically um, retaining from saying side conversations and just um, being overall a team player because you're, you have to be a team player so that everyone gets a chance to talk so that we all get a relationship going and understanding of the topic. Yeah. That's a, that's a great strategy to really get, give all teachers the opportunity to engage. Um, so I know that you, so managing a group of six to eight teachers can be difficult. And in fact, you had a group of 10. <laughs> so you were on the higher end of that. Um, what were some of the strategies that you used to keep teachers on track and focused on the topic? So um, we did, we had a very large group. Um, I wanna say we had 11 to 12 teachers. So um, something that was helped us was we had a group and it was mixed. We had some beginner teachers, some refining teachers and some expert teachers. So that helped us a lot. And within this group, we did a lot of check-ins. We had a very open line of communication and we did a lot of popping up to the sites to visit the teachers in their environment. And um, we did a lot of scheduling and making sure that they knew we had a group coming up, um, making sure that if that person was presenting for the day, that we called them ahead of time and said, hey, do you have your video um, uploaded? Is there anything that I can assist you with? Um, do you have any questions or concerns about your presentation that you're going to do? Just basically letting them know that you are their coach and you are available to be their support before they come in for their, um, for their group meeting. Mm -hmm. And so in, in the meeting, those, those group norms really helped. And then to get them on track before you would um, just make sure that they had what they needed to be prepared and engaged. That's great. So Brittany and I both, um, we were co-coaches with our large group of 10 to 12 at times, um, teachers. And that worked very well for us. We were able to share those responsibilities and keep on track and keep things moving. Because as we all know, time is at a premium and you want to really be able to delve into the topics and videos and get the feedback um, necessary. And I think that that was, um, like a star for us in keeping and managing the group and the time and um, giving everybody an opportunity to, to share. And definitely splitting that group where Miss Bandy had six and I had six helped a lot because it, kept, it helped us to have focus on those particular, um, particular subjects that we were going through. Yeah. And so one thing that we don't talk about with this, um, with these materials is that um, these coaches also did some individual coaching in between. And so, um, yeah, that's a great idea to, to split up the group and um, to have those teachers that you are directly working with. Um, and I would recommend uh, uh, if you are able to have um, an extra coach support you, um, it just helps with making sure that meetings run more smoothly. Um, 
there are certain forms like that, you know, you might want to fill out that are easier done if you split and divide the roles and, um, but they definitely can be um, run um, one on, you know, with just one facilitator. But I, yeah, it's much easier to have uh, more people. <laughs> Sarah, I have a quick question. Um, we are getting lots of questions about the relationship between individual coaching and group coaching. And I don't want to go too deep into it, but if you could just talk real briefly about that, that'd be great. Sure. So um, in year one of this study, we were able to get more individual coaching um, happening simply because we um, weren't in the middle of a pandemic. But um, how the individual coaching um, worked um, was that each coach had a set of teachers that they were going to be um, working with. So I had eight teachers and I ran a group. And so those um, teachers that I worked individually with, I would meet with them in between group meetings. So those group meetings were monthly. And so they each teacher would get one group meeting. So they would attend, all the teachers would attend the group. And then um, I would individually coach those eight teachers in between. Um, and so that's how it was designed. But then of course, you know, all, all um, the, the things kind of changed and um, we had to pivot and started doing things virtually. Um, but one thing that was really cool that I'd like to point out is that even though we were in the middle of a pandemic, we still had lots of engagement and attendance. And um, we were really worried, like, how are we going to do these virtually? But um, I think we were, you know, we were able to do it. And these coaches really rocked it. They were able to keep um teachers engaged and I'll even see teachers that have participated in the study and they'll just you know say wonderful things about the program and how um how much they they got from the group coaching process so um the idea was that individual would happen in between but um I think that um the main point is the the groups we got all the groups in and um it was it was a lot of fun All right, so a big part of this process is sharing videos. Um, and so we talk a little bit about um, example videos in week one and how week two are um, teachers in the group um, videos. Um, could you tell me um, how did you decide who would share the videos for each of the content areas? How did that work? Um, so for our group, um, things kind of really fell into place very naturally. We maintained the integrity of the program as it was presented to us as, as um, the coaches, meaning all of the topics were already laid out, starting with Friendship Week and working their way down. As we um, presented the overviews and discussion of what those topics were, teachers that it spoke to them kind of were like, oh, well, I'm really interested in Friendship Week, or I really want to know more about anger management. So we let the teachers have the autonomy to select those um, topics that were of interest to them. And that is how um, each person was designated to present first or second or third. Um, as we kind of stated earlier, we had several people in our group. So that lent itself to having two presentations or two videos uh, represented at each group meeting. And when the way that we did it in the first year when we were running it, we had people sign up for videos as well. So yeah, it kind of, people kind of naturally are drawn to a certain topic. <laughs> Additionally, we had, um, because of the size of our group and we did it kind of two by two, there were some topics left over that were not necessarily claimed by anyone. But the teachers that kind of started out the um, presentations were so glad and felt that it was so beneficial to be videoed and actually see themselves. They were like, oh, well, I'll take that last one. And so they got another go round, um, which 
means that they felt or saw the benefit of video recording themselves and getting the feedback from their peers. Yeah, because sharing video can be can feel kind of scary. Um, so talk to a little bit about how um, you prepared teachers for sharing video. So I can speak to that. Um, I think this was one of the major hurdles in group coaching that uh, me and my co-coach had to, to help our teachers deal with was none of them really wanted to be videoed. Um, it was intimidating. It, they felt like they had to present the perfect example. Um, and, and that just made them like want to record over and over and over and over until they felt like it was the perfect example so that everyone would be able to just see this is exactly how it's done. Um, you're welcome for my expertise. Um, so um, reality, you know, it's not going to happen. And so what I would just do is I tried to, to pump these teachers up as much as possible and just say, oh, man, OK, you've got friendship skills. Let me tell you about how you're already awesome at friendship skills and then help them brainstorm what time of day they feel like, um, you know, would work the best for that. Did they need my support in any way? Did they need me to hold the iPad? Did they need me to stay far, far away? Um, whatever they needed to feel more comfortable about it. Um, and then just um, affirm the first video and remind them that um, we're not looking for perfection, we're looking for reality. And um, we're gonna take the video and we're gonna, we're gonna see what is it really like to try out something new like this in my kind of classroom with my kind of kids who aren't on their P's and Q's, um, who are hungry or who are tired um, and just how helpful that can be. Um, you know, we talked, Brittany talks a little bit about group norms. And so whenever we watch those example videos um, that were brought um, from strangers, you know, we got to kind of practice um, talking things out and um, accepting each other's opinions and ideas. And so that kind of builds that culture of safety and security and allowing them to kind of be vulnerable and put that video out there. So reminding them that, you know, this is the process that we're all going to talk about it and we're, it's going to help your fellow teachers um, know how to handle these situations and they're going to learn from you and you're going to learn from them. Um, I just really felt like this was a real challenge to group coaching, but every last teacher did a video. Every last teacher got excellent feedback, no matter what the scenario was. Um, and they all just really appreciated the pats on the back for, um, for putting themselves out there, putting the skills into practice and letting us see how it went. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And I think that something that you mentioned is like, um, what I kind of noticed too is as time went on, like that fear of sharing the video kind of dissipated. Like they got really good at giving, reflecting and giving feedback to their peers. And I feel like the teachers that started in the group were different and grew and, you know, they had new skills by the end. So awesome. Um, what, what did you do if teachers didn't have videos to share? Was that, did that ever happen? Okay, I think I, I think this question was for us, Sarah. Um, so me and Ms. Vandy, we had our share of technical issues. Um, they are going to happen. And one thing I want for my fellow coaches to know is it's, it's okay. Um, those technology issues are gonna happen. So you as a coach, always want to make sure that you're pre-prepared for those things. Um, I remember, um, from my experience, one of our coaches, we were trying to watch a video and the video would not play on the PowerPoint board. And so I literally took my iPad and had to walk around with it. But the point of the matter is that uh, the video was shown and our group was still able to have that guided conversation, those learning experiences. It's just all in being flexible and being able to just make it happen and knowing that it's okay. Things are not going to be perfect, but your main goal is just to make sure that there is a learning experience for the teachers and that they get a benefit out of it. Um, also, too, Erica was talking about um, people feeling like they're being judged. Um, yes, that is the first thing that somebody's going to say, like, oh, my goodness, they're going to judge me. But one thing I want to say that happened in our groups were that our teachers were so supportive of each other. 
um, they actually build relationships by giving that feedback and saying, wow, I really like how you did that in your class. Um, I'm going to try it in my class or wow, that's something that I never thought to try, but I want to try next time. And so just watching those videos and actually watching the, um, the packets come together, because if we're on friendship week, you know, you try a new skill within your classroom and it's like, I didn't think this would work with this child, but now I saw it work. I'm willing to give it another try or I'm willing to try it in other ways. And so um, that helped with them having relationships with each other, as well as the coach, us encouraging them, hey, you're going to do great. Don't worry about anything that goes bad. You know, this is for your learning. This is for your growth. Mm -hmm. That's great. Like a culture of like reflection and feedback and growth. I love that. Awesome. All right. So hey, Sarah, sorry, uh -huh. I'm going to interrupt one more time, but um, uh, Brittany, I loved your response about the technology because we're getting lots of questions about technology and that's just how it is, right? right. I mean, it's what's happening to Sarah today, right? Yeah. So um, there are also some questions. And again, this is getting into stuff that we're not gonna go really deeply into today, but um, some people are asking about how do you kind of balance um, what teachers are, what you're talking about in the group with individual goals of teachers. And I think the easy answer to that is that um, we really focused on more individual goals during the individual coaching sessions, but all the teachers wrote goals about the content of the group sessions. And that's what we mostly focused on in the group sessions. So in response to those questions. Okay, Sarah, back to you. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, what do you think could be some of the benefits of using this approach? Um, so I, honestly, I don't know if I can advocate for this enough um, between the, the quality of the materials, the amount of resources you get to provide to teachers, um, the information um, and the relevance. Uh, all of it is it's just really great. So um, every teacher that we coach um, deals with behaviors. Behaviors are on your mind before the first child walks in for the new school year. You're wondering what you're going to face. Um, you're wondering how it's going to go as you try to establish your classroom community. Um, you might have children returning and you're wondering if they grew up over the summer a little bit. Or, um, and so whether you're a brand new teacher and um, you haven't had much experience yet, with um, building social emotional skills and, and dealing with conflicts in the classroom, or if your teacher has been here 30 years, um, they all fit in group coaching and they all fit in sharing their experiences and learning and growing from each other in this type of format. Um, it really does build camaraderie and community, whether they're in the same site together or if they're across sites. Um, and um, it's just it's just such a relevant thing. It, it helps affirm those teachers who've been doing this forever. It provides new strategies um, and offers new skills for, for teachers to try in the classroom and hopefully um, make for smoother years and help to see some um, children gaining new skills and, and uh, growing in their social emotional development in the ways that they're intended to. Yes, absolutely. Um, as Erica kind of outlined, she touched a little bit on it, which is um, you know, just building that partnership and network along with your coworkers, colleagues, and peers is um, really important because we know that part of the struggle um, for teachers is kind of like that isolation of you being in your four walls in your classroom, thinking that these things are only happening to you. Johnny's saving it just for you. Mm -hmm. um, you get to know that it's you're not alone. Um, and most likely the things that you are doing in your classroom are the correct things to be doing. So you are be you're getting that affirmation that, hey, okay, I do really do know what I'm doing. You know, there is a there is a word for that, or there is a research behind what I'm doing. Um, I am making a difference. Um, and you kind of you get that when you're with your peers and you're with them in the same room or on cyberspace. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, and talking about your issues and talking about your triumphs and your victories. Um, I think for me, that is the part that I like best about the group model um, is having the, the time to devote to that part of your work. Yeah. 
Um, Sarah, I think for me, it's the the successful outcomes that we end up seeing at the end. Like nothing makes you more proud than seeing a teacher who kind of um, had a little doubt in the beginning, have very successful outcomes and find new ways to manage their classroom. Um, one, another thing to me is um, we all know that times change and with times changing, our children change. And so some strategies that we used last year may not work this year. And so having that strong foundation of the group coaching method will help you to realize I can try these strategies in different ways. Um, what may work for this group may not work for this group. And also just knowing that um, you had growth within that process. Um, you learned something new. Um, you were willing to try something new and you made relationships overall of anything you made great relationships with not only your coach but other individuals that you probably wouldn't have had relationships with in the beginning mm -hmm. and through the feedback like when you say that when we looked at the the feedback from teachers about this process they all like raved about getting to learn something new from their peers um or seeing it in action in a different in in their context. So that was really great. Um, so I think we have, oh, we are out of time. Well, you can do one more question, okay. Sarah. One more question. Okay. So um, um, the teachers that participated in this project, of course, they volunteered um, because they consented to join. But how would you go about recruiting or selecting teachers for group coaching? And what would be some of those things you might consider? Well, I think that, um, you know, we were fortunate enough to have a, a group that was very involved um, provided feedback, they were, they were really involved in, into the whole process. So for me, I would make sure that I engage those graduates or past participants to be our voices and like um, in the uh, break room, so to speak, to really talk up what it is that we do and, and what group coaching really is about and to be our, our cheerleaders for the process. So, um, that's one way that I would try to go about getting more people interested in the word out as to what it is that we're actually doing. Uh, I, I agree with Ms. Bandy. I think if you present a, a successful program, then it'll automatically speak for itself because you'll have those new teachers that may come in and say, hey, like I saw the difference that it made within your classroom. Um, I think that if you stay steady with it, and if you have that great relationship with your team, then it'll automatically gravitate to people towards you. And they will be interested because they want to do better. They want to see growth and they want to get successful child outcomes. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your perspective, because I could talk about group coaching all day, but um, I think it really is helpful to hear coaches in the field working with real teachers and um, what you kind of learned and some of your perspectives related to this model. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your thoughts with us. And before Victor takes off, takes over, I'm just going to say y'all are all rock stars and we're so, so grateful, both that you were willing to do this webinar, but also that you're willing to partner up with us in this work. Mm -hmm. um, and before I turn it over to Victor, I'm just going to um, remind everyone that there are there is an additional webinar and it's um, using practice based coaching in a group format and so it will give you a little bit more information about how we use the forms and then of course that intro video will um, give you some tips for how to prepare. All right, thank you so very much to all of our panelists for their wonderful insights. Your feedback is very important to the work that we do. Please remember to provide your feedback on this webinar with our post webinar survey by typing the web address shown on this slide into your internet browser. Your certificate of attendance will appear once you submit the survey. We invite you to visit our website, challengingbehavior.org, to sign up for our upcoming webinars, access recordings, download pyramid model resources, and more. Thank you to our funder for making this webinar possible. This concludes our webinar. Thank you all and have a great rest of your day.